escape from Syria. As dawn breaks, Muhammad runs from his country and makes it across the border to Turkey. Now he'll meet the smuggling gangs who say they can take him to Europe for a price. I've got a two-year-old daughter, and when planes bombed our town at night, she hid in the corner and covered her ears. She screamed, Daddy, they're bombing us. She's afraid there's nothing I can do. If fear is a person, then you can kill him. But fear is a plane in the sky, and who can cope with that? In Istanbul, Mohammed meets other Syrians, including eight-year-old Wiham, who has travelled here without her father. They plan to go to Greece by boat, but Wiam does not know how to swim. It's a dangerous and illegal journey, but there's no easy way for a Syrian refugee to get into Europe. Amnesty International says Germany is the most generous EU country, offering to take 10,000 Syrians. The other 27 countries have offered to take just over 2,000 between them. France has offered 500 places, Spain 30, 18 EU countries, including Britain and Italy, have not offered any places at all. There's been some money given to the humanitarian, uh, to the humanitarian effort, but what's really needed is to help the people on the ground, the people who are really suffering, people with disabilities, with illnesses, who just cannot get the care that they need, people who are at risk, their security is at risk because of who they are, and they really need a safe place to, to go to that will provide to them what they need. Amnesty's figures don't tell the whole story. In Sweden, 20,000 Syrians have found refuge, but most had to make the long and dangerous journey themselves without any help. Other countries, like Britain, have helped fund camps on Syria's borders, arguing that this is an efficient way of helping many people rather than offering resettlement to a few. Mohammed does arrive in Greece. He ends up in a crowded camp on an island. He too wants to go to Sweden. But for now, that is just a dream. Barnaby Phillips, Al Jazeera.